What's up and welcome back to the channel. The name is Ninja Knight. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell up above for future uploads and make sure you check out the link posted down below. Thank you. So here I have a post from McFarland Toys Official and he says a year long build a program is coming to McFarland Toys. Get ready to build Batman from future's end when you collect all four action figures throughout the year starting with Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond will be in stores April 2021. Then look out for the next figures coming June, August and October of 2021. Now what's really strange about this post is Todd actually reveals the figures and at least the preliminary pictures within the video with himself so the fact that they've blacked out the characters here is quite strange and i think when a lot of people look at mcfarland toys for example it seems like there seems to be people on different wavelengths in terms of what they're doing certain pictures seem to get out and get leaked other times it doesn't seem like people know what they're doing and there seems to be an absolute cluster going on in relation to this you know now todd has talked about the beer bug being a big effect towards him and the company and the way they're strategizing things and certainly as well too with some of the changes that he's had to make over the last sort of year in terms of the product that he's making and how he's making it because some things have been a success some things have been a big failure and i mean he's talked openly as well too about the wonder woman 1984 stuff coming at the wrong time and just being a bad shelf warmer in itself i think most people when they're looking at that figures and those two figures for example will start to say yeah that was definitely the studio as well and the whole thing that went on with the bear bug didn't really help but I think overall when you look at those figures, it seemed like that was a line that he wanted to get deeper into. But it doesn't seem like that that's going to happen whatsoever from some of the stuff that he's been saying. So what's interesting here now is he's decided now to go with a year long build a figure. And I think that this is a really strange thing to do. There might be a reason behind this and there might be a method to the madness. But when you're looking at this being target exclusive, and I don't know, like I mean, see, like this is what I'm saying. It seems like everything is very unclear with him. Are all of these figures going to be target exclusives? Is it just a Batman Beyond figure that's going to be a target exclusive? What about international fans? Now, we have some of the comments from McFarland Toys being like, yeah, international fans are going to get these as well too. But there's no real kind of idea as to where and when. The McFarland figures, particularly the fourth wave and sort of second wave really of McFarland figures that came out have absolutely shelf warmed here in Ireland. It doesn't look like that there's going to be a major star that's going to carry them much more again because they've done really badly in terms of sales and I mean they've nearly been half priced in most places. So it means that the likelihood of seeing some of these better figures that unfortunately are coming waves later instead of them coming out of the gate and hitting the ground running. McFarlane has absolutely made a mess of it in terms of what he's going to do here in Ireland and that's really disappointing I think. This is a really strange one in my opinion and I'm going to go through it in this video. First of all we have this... Uh, batman futures end this joker bot i don't like this design and i'm going to be out straight with saying that i think a lot of people online are saying yeah this looks cool it certainly looks different it's nothing that we've seen before and that's something that todd has constantly said he said that he wants to make figures that people haven't seen before and that they'd like to get on their shelves i don't know what the concept of this is uh, i don't know why it seems to be like voldemort in terms of with professor quirrell where he has this face on the back, like the Voldemort face on the back of the head of a human character or some sort of character, maybe it's robotic. I don't know what the idea is behind this. I don't know if he's going to make a build a figure why he just didn't do someone that's going to be really, I suppose, popular within the DC line. I mean, you could have done Atrocitus, you could have maybe done Clayface, people and characters that people are clamoring for now at this moment in time, whereas this just looks like it's another Batman figure, it's a Joker, who cares? It, does it look cool? Does it look different? Yeah. I don't really like the way the head uh, has a head on the back of it. I think that looked ridiculous personally. But that's just my opinion. But going down looking at here. This is something I talked about in a previous video. Particularly with the Batman Beyond figure. I said that we would absolutely positively see this figure again. And that we'd probably have an alternate face or an alternate head. Look absolutely right by this one. We have a Batman Beyond here with a face mask covering. Yeah it looks good. It doesn't seem to come with the thrusters, the thruster boosting stuff that they had in the previous figure. It seems to come with batarangs in this version of it. And personally, I think that this is seemingly going to be a tactic that McFarlane is going to use now going forward. He's done this as well with the Death Metal's Batman, particularly the one with the scythe. There's a version with just the scythe that can go on the bike that he's done separately rather than just packing in the Batman with the bike, which would have been a better idea in my opinion. And now he's re-releasing that same Batman now with a Build-A-Figure piece later on in the line. I think with the the dark side that's dressed as Batman. And I mean, that in itself, why have you done that? I mean, give someone a new figure or give someone a radically altered figure 
a Batman without the sight and with a guitar is not something that I personally want myself and I don't want to have to double dip on that figure probably am going to have to now because I'm going to have to have one sitting on the bike because neither of the figures are accommodating for being able to sit on the bike you'll have to flex the leather jacket to have to go over the bike which is a bit of a deterrent in itself and how long is that rubber going to hold up over time particularly is my biggest concern but here you have this really strange idea now of blacking out these figures and to me that this is a strange way to promote things rather than just showing here we're getting so you have figure two is coming june 2021 figure three august 2021 figure four october 2021 now what's going to be question marked around this one is will each of these figures be in separate waves are these just going to be target exclusives for those months what way is this going to go going forward i think that this has left an awful lot of questions and i think that this is a problem with mcfarland toys in itself and i know i'm being critical of them but and i know a lot of, a lot of people out there are going to be mcfarland fans and some of them as well too are quite militant in the way they, they, they defend Todd with certain things like this. But it's not really clear are these exclusives to Target and they're going to be one every kind of couple of months. Are these going to be in a wave so that means then you're going to buy the whole wave to get these guys. Or what way is it going to work going forward. It feels like a lot of posts that McFarlane puts up. There's always loads of questions underneath that and people are just not clear where this company is going or what it's doing. This is a company that has been going for a long time and it seems like it's amateur hour with an awful lot of stuff that were that's happening constantly with this. It's different to Hasbro, for example, which seems to be a well-oiled, finely tuned machine in terms of they're very clear with their statements, they're very clear with this is a fan channel, this is the only way you're going to get it, this is going to be in this wave, this is going to be a whole wave of these guys, we'll see them at this time. And it's very clear for collectors to go, that's great, that's what I'm going to spend my money on. Whereas with this now, you don't know what's coming with it. What's coming in the wave, if this is the wave of this, is it going to be Justice League Snyder Cut stuff? That's been teased. No revelations as of yet. We're going into February to Justice League Snyder Cut. I think drops in like March or April. Nothing supporting that now at the moment. They've, they've made allusions to maybe perhaps doing a dark side from that movie and a step move perhaps from that movie. Maybe a black suit Superman. They've not revealed anything yet. I think that this is the, the moment in time, particularly when you start off in January, to be like, bang this is what we're going to do for a year here's this big blockbuster that you all are looking forward to let's go with this instead now he's chosen a lion that i think is quite strange and he's chosen one character in particular that i'm going to talk about now in a moment that i think is wildly strange to pick from now when you look at this is the figures that are going to be coming with it this is to build the figure a little bit more it's very odd looking it's very proportionally odd looking i personally don't like the head sculpt i think the head sculpt looks terrible if it was a joker but and i had the joker's head and no bat symbol on it that and i had this gnarly stuff coming out of the back of it i'd say yeah no problem that looks cool or if it looked like the batman beyond tv series that'd be fine as well i think that that looks okay but ultimately i'm not excited for this build a figure i don't see an awful lot of excitement online for this one but there are some people that are like oh yeah that looks cool it's something that we haven't seen before to me it's not exciting this t these two and i'm going to talk about this guy now in a moment these two here are the most exciting things that I've seen within this line. I think the Shriek looks absolutely phenomenal. And that's something I'm going to have to give McFarlane props on with this one. This one looks absolutely brilliant. But this is again tying into the fact of what happens with international fans on this one. Where is it going to come for us? Like we've just went through now, particularly if you're in Ireland, you were able to buy from the UK without any sort of issues in the past. If there's a UK exclusive, what's going to happen there now? Is Ireland going to get it? how are we going to locate this one now like like i'm saying there like a, a massive conglomerate company now have basically half priced a lot of these figures don't look like they'd be getting them again and that seems to be the end of the line shriek looks absolutely phenomenal here he's talked about this kind of reflective kind of orb here now in the chest and also on the head and i think that this looks really nice i think if it carries this over into the final production in terms of this really really clear white and this really bright white particularly with the black background that, that he's wearing i think looks phenomenal i think that this is probably the best figure or at least one of the best figures that mcfarlane has done it looks interesting it's visually appealing and it definitely will stand out looking at this guy though uh mcfarlane decided to choose blight from the batman beyond comics and a very big member as well too within the tv series i think that this was a missed opportunity to go and make figures from the tv series we did only see dc collectibles did a batman of the future with terry mcginnis and old bruce and ace and that was more or less it then when you're talking about then batman of the future stuff from dc collectibles this would have been a great idea and a great opportunity to take the ball by the horns and say to people look we know that we didn't do too well with the previous animated figures here's animated figures from batman beyond that you all love and people would have bought into it it's something that 
people haven't gotten over the last couple of years. This to me is a missed opportunity. Now he says, uh, as you can see in the show, he wears a suit, and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this version of the suit now, and it's just like, oh, like is there a plan then in the future that you're going to do the version of the suit like the Batman Beyond TV series, or are you going to not do that? Are you going to do a Batman of the Future? TV series line, I hope so, because I personally think that these two, sell, especially I think, will sell well, and I think that maybe if this look does well, maybe he will end up doing the suit with look, and I think we'll see from there, but it's a very strange one in terms of the ones he's chosen, and nothing is more strange than this one, is he using some reuse from previous figure, maybe perhaps with the wings, he's talked about the gauntlets been able to fit into it, but he's chosen Batwoman at a time, when Batwoman is at its lowest in terms of popularity, it has gone through a very bad four season and a season with which it was absolutely ridiculed with. People absolutely didn't like it. Season two has fared even worse. There's people that are absolutely and positively ridiculing it now at the moment and the viewing numbers for it are terrible. Bear in mind, this is a viewing number for a TV show that has a brand new lead star that they've all talked about for the last couple of months during a beer bug situation where a lot of people are at home and the viewing numbers for this show are still terrible and you've decided then to select a character from that essentially i mean what is the idea behind that and i mean that to me i mean he's a great businessman and there's no doubt in that like he's fantastic but some of the decision making behind it is really strange this would be a good idea if it was an old bruce or maybe a batman beyond body maybe a little bit buffer a little bit thicker with an old bruce head on it, an interchangeable head with bruce wayne that would have been the way to go because i think that picking this character at this moment in time where it's at its lowest in terms of popularity that's a shelf warmer and he's talked about with his business practice in terms of a wave and his waves are i'll pick two a's two b's and two c's so he's going to have two a listers two b listers two c listers we're still at a moment in time as well that he has more than likely and more than i suppose overproduced batman figures he said that yeah they sell and that's why we keep doing them and sorry we're going to try and get around to the others sooner rather than later we're into year two now of this license and still the persistent complaints are happening we still have a line by the way that hasn't indulged in the face print technology that's something that hasbro are leaving this company behind and Mafex as well too have left this company behind like way in the dust it looks great for him with the characters like this because you're not worried about paint apps not at all but with them when you look at this for example how is that going to turn out when you come and see it then in person some of the figures have bad paint apps some of it looks cartoony some of the paint apps are off like some of the oils are too far up or they're too far down the mouths are certainly off and that's something that i'd be certainly looking into if i was him why am I saying all this? Well, I'm saying all this because these are comments that Todd himself has made. He said, yeah, we'd be able to do this. We can we can do it as good as, if not better, than the likes of the $80, $90 figures. I haven't seen that yet. If I was him, I'd have made a statement with this line. I'd have had an old Bruce, maybe. And then I would have had these two villains. Brilliant. And maybe as a builder figure, maybe some sort of robotic Joker from Batman Beyond or something like that. Not this version, but a different version. Or maybe I would have selected a different figure altogether, like a clay face, for example. That'd have been a good one. You build all of the, you get all these figures, and you build a clay face, and the clay face can fit anywhere within your collection. I think that would have been a better idea. So, like I said, some of the decisions that are going into this line are very strange. A couple of waves now have been strange. The articulation is still not fully there for people. And it's something that I don't think he's listening at all to about. I think he's just going to keep going on with what he's doing. Is this license going to be renewed within three years? I suppose we'll wait and see. I mean, he's talking about three years and beyond. If it continues this way and a lot of this stuff continues to shelf warm. And I mean, it's shelf warming in America as well too. From what I understand from a lot of pictures that I can see. It's not going to be a renewal of the license. And overall at the minute, I don't think it's been a fantastic usage of the license. There's still problems that are there. I mean, Shriek here even looks, still looks like he's wearing a nappy. It's still the nappy idea, the diaper version of things that the characters are wearing. And it, we're still having problems that we're having for a year now. This is also something that's prevalent as well in the Mortal Kombat line. There's problems that are happening there that are just... I think a lot of people are just purchasing those figures and then they're saying, yeah, that'll do, just standing on the shelf. They're not looking for it to be a proper action figure. They're not looking for it to be tested to the likes of Storm Collectibles levels of articulation or anything like that. They're just happy to stand them there. This is not what it should be. And I know I'm probably sounding harsh on McFarlane and I'm certainly not going to be getting any freebies from McFarlane, but I'm just being honest. 
I'm seeing a lot of people out there that are not being honest and they're really defending this stuff down to the ground and I just think that this is an indefensible choice. I think two out of four here are good choices. That's how I feel about it. And that's something that I think I'm going to stay with because, for example, like the likes of Batman Beyond, why did you not just give that extra head? Like That extra head could have just been packed in with the standard version. Look at Power Rangers Lightning Collection, for example. That has a civilian head and a helmeted head. And then you have a variety of weapons and then blast effects. Like, if he's going to be talking a game about this sort of stuff, you need to be stepping up. Like I said, the figure choices for this line and this wave, if it's a wave or whatever it is, are strange. The Build-A-Figure uh, choices so far have been very strange. I don't know what's driving it. I don't know why they're going for some obscure references. He said it in the past in terms of, well, if it looks cool, I want to do it. You're not getting the big hitters out there. You're not getting Clayface. People are now asking as well for a Titan Joker from the Batman Arkham Asylum games. He's not. I mean, he's not going to beat the DC Collectibles version of it. He's just not. He's not going to get the same sculpt. He's not going to make it look accurate to the game. He's proven that already with the Arkham Asylum figures. He's proven it somewhat with the Arkham Knight figure. And particularly as well too with the Arkham Origins Deathstroke. I mean, that was missing paint all over and missing articulation. Like I said, this is something that could go very awry very quickly and I don't think if the next couple of waves are to people's liking, I think it's all out. John Stewart still hasn't been revealed by the company officially, I don't think, at this moment in time. So what's happening with John Stewart? Is he coming in a certain wave? When are we going to see Red Lanterns? When are we going to see Yellow Lanterns? Just to put into perspective, when, for example, DC icons were doing things at DC Collectibles, they were putting out loads of different figures from different lines. They were doing Swamp Thing, they were doing Static Shock, they were doing Mr. Miracle, they were doing they were planning, I think, to do Dr. Fate, they were doing Etrigan, they were planning on doing him. They've done all the big heavy hitters. And then they were going in then looking at the likes of accessory packs and all that for the Green Lanterns. I mean some great ideas then in there. And then unfortunately then they had to move in then to the Essentials line, which was highly articulated, and I think they actually ultimately on overall look better personally. Even though it's the reuse of the same sort of body, I think that they look really good. They also articulated very nicely. And I think that that's something maybe that should have been carried over into this. I mean, the nappy look on this, the, di- the diaper look on this looks absolutely terrible. And it's really much a big saw and I saw on this. And when you're looking at that then, what's the longevity going to be like out of something like that? Is it going to be something that you're going to be able to see in the next couple of years? Or is it going to be something that's going to just fade away and break or whatever like that? Because that's the tendency that these things possibly are going to have. Anyway, that's my video for today on this one. I'm disappointed by these reveals. Um, I'm really hoping for more coming in the future in terms of something better. At this moment in time, I feel like I'm cherry-picking the McFarlane Toys line. That's not something the line wants to be doing. I mean, Power Rangers Lightning Collection, for example, has me buying full waves every time. All the figures look good. Now I'm buying the monsters from that wave as well, too. They've gotten them at an 8-inch scale with a bit of a higher price point, but they look really good. They come with good accessories, fantastic articulation, and that's ultimately what we want. And I mean, it's not breaking the bank. It's great being able to sit there and... I suppose say oh well this looks cool and this is what I think looks great it's not what the fans want it's certainly not what I want and I mean picking a character at the moment that is highly and widely disliked in the fandom and the viewership shows that seems like a weird one personally that looks great I hope that that'll look good but again looks like that this one could have the black uh, nappy and diaper so I wouldn't be holding out too much hope on that one anyway talk to you later like share subscribe Comment, good luck.